and still the request come rolling in anything by Charlie Lansborough of course I'll play it for you Pauline from Summer Hill in Nina in County Tipperary asks very specially for Charlie Lansborough and also asks for Elaine Page ahead of that Elaine uh, who is uh, currently going into the brand new production of uh, Sunset Boulevard playing Norma Desmond which normally breaks the um, EP succession of characters that she's been playing if you know what I mean Elaine Page EP or her initials but she also played e- Edith Piaf and Eva Perron and uh, she wondered if her next show would be impersonating Elvis but it's not it's Sunset Boulevard with Norma Desmond and here's a lady of uh, great dramatic quality Shirley Bassey on Late Date Tonight Goldfinger Michael Flatley from his uh, debut album CD and cassette called Michael Flatley. That was a lovely tune he played for us on the flute and it was called The Scholar. Right now it's time for The Living Word read by Sean Healy. The difference between what we say and what we do can be very striking sometimes. Often this divergence may not be obvious to ourselves but it can be crystal clear to us when we see it in others. We are all very familiar with situations where people say one thing and do another. In fact, we can be very critical of politicians, for example, when they make all sorts of promises at election time and then fail to deliver on these promises once they form a government. Often where the divergence between what we say and what we do can be very clear in our own lives is when we compare our prayer with the rest of our lives. We pray, for example, for peace in our homes and an hour later spread gossip that we know will cause friction. We pray for something and then so often work for the opposite. Every day, for example, many of us pray the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. In this we pray to God, Thy will be done on earth. It might be useful to stop and ask ourselves, if we act as if we really believed in that prayer? Do we really act so that God's will may be done on earth? What am I going to do today to further God's will? What will I do in my home to help God's will to reign? We may pray that God's will be done in the workplace. This prayer, however, is meaningful only insofar as I am prepared to conduct myself and to encourage colleagues to behave in a way that will further God's will. Likewise, we may pray that our local communities be places where everyone is respected and where all can enjoy life to the full. That prayer isn't very meaningful, however, unless we are prepared to work in our communities to make them such places. So let us try then to work for the things for which we pray. Let us try to bridge the gap between what we say and what we do. The Living Word was presented tonight by Sean Healy. This is RTE Radio 1 at 1. Radio 1 News with Michael Murphy. The IRA has said it's taking seriously recent loyalist paramilitary threats of a return to violence. However, in a statement issued last night... It said it had no desire for any type of military engagement with loyalism. The statement followed weekend claims that an unidentified loyalist splinter group had abandoned the ceasefire and warned it would kill members of the IRA and Sinn Féin. The IRA statement made no mention of last week's joint British-Irish communique. American television networks have predicted that the Senate Majority Leader Bob Dole has won Georgia and Vermont in the latest series of Republican primaries and appears likely to do so in six other states. Commentators say should the predictions prove correct, Senator Dole will have taken a major step forward in his attempt to win his party's nomination to contest the presidency next November. Gorthy and County Donegal haven't ruled out a paramilitary involvement in the death of a man whose body was found at a caravan park in Bondoran yesterday. The man, who hasn't yet been identified, appeared to have suffered head and leg injuries. 
a post-mortem examination is to take place. The RUC say masked men forced their way into a house on the Brandywell estate in Derry last night and asked for a man by name. The gang smashed up furniture and household goods when they discovered that he wasn't there. A police spokesman said a woman and two young children were in the house at the time, but no one was injured. Senior Gore, the sources, have reacted angrily to a Doyle debate in which questions were asked about the seizure of £130 million worth of cannabis in a truck near Erlingford, County Kilkenny. They say the public debate is endangering an international investigation and putting the lives of certain people at risk. The General Secretary of the Irish Congress of Trade Unions, Peter Castle, said there was no way the PAYE taxpayer should pay or be asked to pay for the £100 million EU fines incurred by the beef industry. Earlier, the IFA President John Donnelly said such a levy would mean that beef farmers were innocent victims of the dispute. The weather forecast. A calm night and continuing dry apart from patchy drizzle or fog. Cloudy conditions generally will prevent temperatures from falling below 2 to 5 degrees. However, locally they will drop to zero under any clear skies with frost occurring. It will be another dry, calm day with sunny spells developing. And that's the news for the moment. Thanks, Michael. Maxi with you through till two on late date. Hope you can stay all the way. A lot of people argued when Olivia Newton-John decided to sing country and western in her programmes. They said she was born in Cambridge in England and spent her formative years in Australia. And what would you know about country? Well, with a voice like that and interpretation uh, skills like that, you don't need to know much more. Me and Bobby McGee by Chris Christopherson, of course, written by him and performed to us for us tonight by Olivia Newton-John. Lots of great things happened to Peter Corey after he won uh, Go For It a couple of years ago. He released two CDs and he has been touring and uh, making quite a lot of friends and money and fans over the uh, ensuing years. Karen Hamill joins him here for the duet. It's cold outside. Classic songs on RTE Radio 1 for you tonight. Coming up to 18 minutes after 1 o'clock. Maxi Verval staying with you through until 2 o'clock. And then, of course, we have the national and international news for you on the top of the hour. And then the Irish Collection. Alf McCarthy is looking after you tonight. And it's the highlights of the day's broadcasting from all the RTE services, keeping you right up to date with world and local events. Tonight on the programme, Neil Tobin on Brendan Behan. News from the Heineken Hot Press Awards. The FAI crisis. What's happening? Well, tune in and you'll know. And a feature on 702, that programme with Tim Lahan. All the best of the contemporary music scene as well. Alf McCarthy is your host on the Irish Collection. Stay tuned. High spirits, darting wit and acid harmonies. These are the hallmarks of Ravel's Piano Concerto in G. And they'll be highlighted by former GPA Dublin International Piano Competition winner Philippe Cassar when he joins the National Symphony Orchestra on Friday the 8th. Maestro Rico Sacani, conductor of that memorable performance of Aida at the Point, conducts Dvorak's ever-popular Symphony No. 9 and Thomas Mignon Overture to begin an Irish Times tour at the National Concert Hall where RTE supports the arts. No stranger to late date Mike Hanrahan, you remember him from Stockton's Wing, where they were packing him in in all the venues all around the nation. Mike is uh, writing a lot more now, and uh, that's his new CD called Someone Like You. Ahead of that, The Seekers and Island of Dreams. And if you wanted to join in on that one, you were very welcome to do so. Here's another one just like that. It's from the lovely voice of Rita Connolly. Amiens. <laughs> 